No one understands what the revelation really is. It's not Revelations or the book of Revelation. It is called the revelation of Jesus Christ, as in the revealing of Jesus Christ. Every chapter, every word, every letter does just that. It reveals Jesus Christ. To start with, the Revelation has 22 chapters. The name Jesus Christ is 11 letters, and Christ himself is associated with the number 11 in quite a few ways. He had 11 apostles, not counting Judas. He added one commandment to the 10, etc. 11 is the master planner in numerology and is associated with space, while the 22 is the master builder and associated with time. There are 22 paths on the tree of life, which doubles as the cross that crucifies the spiritual Christ and the tree of Eden, in which Christ the serpent. For Christ said, My flesh is meat and my blood is wine, and this Eucharist serves as the forbidden fruit for the New Testament Eden. Indeed, Christ is the serpent, and Christianity is the fall of man all over again. There is also a remarkable correspondence with the 22 tarot archetypes of the major arcana, with the 22 chapters and the 22 verses of Revelation 13, in which we find a secret code. Verse 6, 13, and 22, Christ says, Let he that has ears listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. These are the numbers for the fool, death, and the lovers. It's pointing towards reincarnation, the faith and patience of the saints. For he that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. Yet they don't all die who, who live by the sword and who murder, at least not in the same lifetime. Mark 10, 29, 30 gives us the clearest scriptures that support reincarnation, but there are many. The early church followed this doctrine. It was Emperor Justinian who arrested the very pope for teaching it and then made it heresy, and it has remained heresy in the church ever since. I want to keep this video focused on scriptures. Hopefully I haven't scared off all the Christians already. Every single thing in the revelation of Jesus Christ is a form of Jesus Christ, including John of Patmos. The church is considered the body of Christ, and John is the part of that body. So all of the seven churches are the body of Christ, and therefore a form of Christ. Christ holds the seven stars of Orion. He is the emperor on his throne, the lamb slain from the beginning of the world, who only dies once at the end of all the ages in Hebrews 9.26. The end and the beginning, the omega and then the alpha. He is called the Amen, the true beginning of creation. The argument can be made that Christ is the Archangel Michael, and therefore any and all of the angels, that Michael is the Lord and the Messiah. I'm not going to get too deep into this right now, but the theology is out there. Christ said that he is the door to the new Jerusalem, the holy city which has no need of the sun or the moon, because the Lamb is the light thereof. Therefore Christ is the new Jerusalem. Christ is the Son and the Son God, therefore Apollo or Apollyon and the woman clothed with the Son. Whether she be the Son or Israel or the Church, it matters not since all of them are the body of Christ. Christ is called the King of Kings, the Morning Star, and 888, the Eighth King. Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon, was also called all of these things, and is Lucifer. If that still isn't enough, please consider all of the other research that's out there about Jesus actually being Lucifer. Therefore, Jesus Christ is the King of Babylon in Revelation 18, and the woman that arrays herself in purple and scarlet is also the body of Christ, the Catholic Church. Jesus Christ is Babylon and the King thereof. Christ is called the spirit of prophecy and the word of God who comes for the purpose of judgment. So he is also the seven angels sounding the trumpets, breaking the seals, and pouring out the bowls and the plagues. Speaking of those plagues, the angel tells us the waters are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So when the plagues are saying the waters became as a dead man and every living soul died in the sea, they are talking about the Christians who became as the dead man, Jesus Christ, on the cross.
Where it says they were given blood to drink, for they were murderers, this refers to drinking the blood of Christ. And throughout the Crusades and the Inquisition, millions were killed in the name of Christ. Jesus is also the four horsemen, especially the white horsemen, but the others are just the phases of the same horse. The white rider who goes forth to conquer with a sword, and in Revelation 19, Christ rides a white horse and comes with a double-edged sword that proceeds out of his mouth. What about the new song of Moses? Well, the composite Christ character is actually a fusion of Moses and his god, Ea Asher Ea. I am that I am, and if you add all that is all, it's even 22 letters. Moses plus a ya equals Yeses, or Moshe plus a ya equals Yeshua. The new song refers to a new chapter or denomination of Judaism, more than likely for the 144,000 made from the 12 tribes. Following the defeat of Christianity, the gospel will return to Israel. The sea of glass for those who got victory over the beast is a sea of reflections, and the sea itself is people's multitudes, nations, and tongues. Judaism and paganism slash Wicca will be the religions that win because they're the only religions that don't send their dead to an afterlife nirvana fantasy land. They are firmly planted on reincarnating to inherit the earth, so that is what they will do. This is the seal of the living God because the body is the temple of the Lord. One interpretation of the two witnesses is that they represent the law and the prophets. And since Christ is the word of God and the word which was with God and was God, he is also the law and the prophets. They are slain before the Lord of the earth, which refers to Adam, who is Saturn, and Christ is called the second Adam or return of Adam. Another interpretation is that they represent Judaism and Christianity. According to Jason, a priest of 30 years who became quite amazing after critical thinking, the two witnesses were Moses and Jesus. Think about it. They were killed and ascended to heaven, and the people of the earth exchanged gifts because of him. That would be Christmas and Hanukkah. In the case of Moses, he led the way into the promised land, but was not permitted to enter in himself. The Lord decided he was to die. In Hosea 13, 1-8, the Lord of the Old Testament said, There is no other Savior but me, and that he would be on to them as the lion, leopard, bear, beast of revelation, the same beast that also had delighted in crushing Christ. So you see, Yahweh, the God, is definitely the beast who rose from the pit and killed both Moses and Christ, the two witnesses. Everything in the Revelation can also be found in the Old Testament. So as you can see, every chapter, every word, every letter, every element in the Revelation of Jesus Christ is a form of Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, this includes the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. What is it the Christians say, that Christ was God in the flesh, that the Father sacrificed his Son, which was really himself? There is no other Savior but me, and Christ is that Savior. So it must be true. The beast from the sea is both Yahweh and Christ. More importantly, there are scriptures that strongly suggest Apostle Peter was the bearer of the beast. Paul said, one is, for, one is of Cephas, one is of Paul, one is of Apollos, and one is of Christ. Was Paul crucified? Is the body of Christ divided? What I see here is Daniel's leopard with four heads. Christ is the body of the leopard, and Paul, or perhaps Judas, is the mouth of the lion. And there are more reasons. And the oldest Bible started with the works of Paul and only had the Gospel of Luke. If we think about it that way, Paul said he was given a thorn of Satan in his flesh and the angel of Satan. He also said, The temptation in my flesh you neither rejected nor despised, but received as an angel as Jesus Christ. Therefore, Paul is saying the angel of Satan in his flesh was Jesus Christ, whom he claimed to meet on the road to Damascus. Supposing there was no historic Christ, just Christians, and Saul of Tarsus murdering them before converting and becoming their leader so that he could take the movement over in the direction he wanted. We know there are very deep links between Apostle Paul and Leviathan. The thorn of Satan in Paul's flesh is Leviathan. Therefore, Jesus Christ is the sea beast Leviathan. Jesus Christ, Leviathan, Judas, and the serpent are all very deeply associated with the number 13 and 26, and we learn about the two beasts in Revelation 
Revelation 13. Jesus is also the false prophet. In the works of Lena Einhorn and historian Ralph Ellis, Jesus was the Egyptian prophet or false prophet who tried to overthrow Jerusalem after leading 4,000 Sakari assassins into the wilderness. Was Jesus a false prophet? Absolutely. Check out the video called 25 Lies of Jesus. For example, he prophesied the temple would be destroyed and not one brick laying on top of another would remain. Except they did and today they call it the Wailing Wall. The second beast rises up from the earth. Of Jesus Christ, it is said he spent three days in the heart of the earth, after which he returns, which means that he did indeed rise up from the earth. Two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. Did you know the mainstream picture of Jesus Christ as a Caucasian with long hair is actually a portrait of Emperor Constantine? Constantine and the Council of Nicaea created the Christian Empire. Constantine was considered a dragon king, and he won his battles with Greek fire he claimed to have been given by angels. So he did indeed deceive them with miracles he was able to do by calling fire down from heaven, so to speak. And this earth beast gives everyone, rich and poor, big and small, the number of the beast, 666. 666 is actually chi X stigma, which literally means Jesus crucified on a cross. The Catholic Church on Ash Wednesday puts the ash cross on the forehead with the right hand, and then you have the demonic deception of stigmata, which is demonic because an actual crucifixion, the nails are in the wrong spot. The stigmata also counts as the grievous sore that happens to those who get the mark of the beast. If people would just accept this explanation, then we wouldn't have to constantly replay it out. Pope Sixtus III went around marking people, but was that enough? No. Will RFID, the barcode, or the cooties jab be enough? Probably not. Now, I said that Christ was Archangel Michael, but he's also the man-child and the dragon. The man-child appears in Job, and there is pretty good research linking Christ to Job or in the book of Job. That Christ is the main child produced by the woman destined to rule all nations is already a mainstream Christian teaching. That Christ is the dragon is presented here in this article written by Jason, who was a priest for over 30 years. Christ begins as a crimson worm, then becomes a serpent, and then evolves into the red dragon. So while, may, so while it may seem like an awesome and logical discovery that every word of the revelation of Jesus Christ reveals Christ, it also presents a problem. It causes Christ to be at war with himself. At the very least, the dragon and the two beasts are the aspects of Christ that he must defeat within himself. A house divided cannot stand. If Satan cast out Satan, then his kingdom is divided, and the dead will rise. There is indeed theological reasons why Christ is Satan and Lucifer. Jesus denied Satan three times, and Peter denied Jesus three times. And Jesus called Peter Satan. The word means adversary. So I admit to you that it was so I submit to you that it was Peter who tempted Christ in the wilderness, and Jesus is another form of Satan. I've saved the best for last. In Revelation 14, Christ appears as the Messiah that seals the 144,000, which I've seen an old video proving is actually all members of the Old Testament and New Testament church throughout all of time, which again is the body of Christ. The math checks out, but I'm sorry I don't have it and I don't remember it and I can't find it. But in this same chapter, Christ appears riding a cloud and carrying a large sickle to reap the whole earth. This is because the true identity of Jesus Christ is none other than death itself. And what does the New Testament say about death? Death is the final enemy to be defeated. 
Well, of course that's Christ, since he is the Alpha and the Omega. In Hebrews 9.26, he can only die once at the end of all the ages. 30 AD was not the end of all the ages. Christ said, you have me always, even until the end of the world. So while Christians are waiting for Christ to return, the truth is, he never left. Even in Zechariah, when Christ does have his feet touch the Mount of Olives, all tribes will mourn for him. Why are they mourning? All eyes will see him, even those who pierced him. The problem with Christians is that they try to brute force their understanding of the Bible, and it causes them to live in a cartoon because they assume everything is literal. Paul said at the sound of the seventh trump, we would all be changed in the blink of an eye, this mortal must put on immortality, and the dead would rise, and the rapture. But for anything to happen in this world, there must be hard science to back it up. And this is where Christians both fail and sin. The laws of God are absolute. If you would enter into life, keep the commandments. While you can break some of God's laws, you can't break the laws of physics. Breaking God's laws causes you to vibrate with death rather than life and decreases your chance of being resurrected or being reincarnated. It may decrease the frequency and cause and cause you to be reborn into bad times. Take this as the seal of the living God, that you may prove yourself worthy to be among the living and to exist in the world of God's laws we call science. To chase after magic and miracles that would break the laws of science is to deceive yourself. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. This is the faith and patience of the saints. He who lives by the sword will die by the sword, but there are many who get away with murder. In this lifetime, yes, but the debt of murder remains and leads to a destiny in which they too will be murdered. At the clearest example of reincarnation is found in Mark 10, 30, where Jesus promises hundreds of mothers, brothers, homes, fields, etc. in this age and eternal life in the age to come. There is really no way to interpret Mark 10, 29 30 without reincarnation the beast rises from the bottomless pit and goes into perdition and as in destruction and in revelation 9 they will seek death and it will flee from them they will desire to die and not be able to then death and hell are cast into the lake of fire which is the second death i won't attempt to perfectly explain it here as it degrades into a cartoon with no hard science jesus christ is death and the spirit of suicide as even revealed in my own life because my father committed suicide and he was he was a Christian when I knew him, but he used to be the coven master of a of a witch coven, which means he was thirteen and had twelve disciples. When Christ is crucified, it's the very last hour, and there is darkness over the world, and a great earthquake. The same thing happens in the sixth seal, darkness, and the earthquake, and Babylon falls in one hour, the last hour. It's the same hour. Jesus Christ is an unbeatable foe who was tricked into slaying himself. I came into his revelation. I decoded his seven thunders. The spiritual Christ is crucified in all dimensions on the tree of life. Fear not he who kills the body, but he who is able to kill the spirit in hell. I have defeated the spiritual Christ and have overcome his deceptions. Indeed, the entire Bible fits on the Kabbalistic tree. Every book and the 22 chapters of Revelation are the 22 paths thereof. The Revelation ends with 22:21, so that Revelation 22:22. 22, 22 Literally nothing is written there. It honors the fool because 22 is also zero. 22 is the catch 22, condemned if you do and condemned if you don't. And everything about the revelation of Jesus Christ is a catch 22 because it causes him to kill himself in the end.